This is the first of a series of videos on the Harbor Freight mini lathe. And I thought we would start with the disassembly of the 7x10 mini lathe to do a 16 inch bed extension. We're going to start doing this, start taking this thing apart, get this out of the way. And I'm going to try and follow the instructions as well as I can. I might get off on a tangent. <laughs> we'll see. Let's do this. Tear down instructions. It says right here, tear down. Follow this procedure to disassemble the lathe. Well, the first three things. Unplug. I already have it unplugged. Remove the tailstock. I've already taken the tailstock off. With it being so small, I very seldom kept the tailstock on the uh, bed. Remove the rear splash guard. That was always in my way. I took that off. Okay, number four, remove the gear, the change gear cover. There are two socket head cap screws. We're talking about this here. That's another upgrade. A lot of people have taken and made thumb screws for that. I'm gonna spin this thing around and we'll start taking stuff apart. Number four, remove the change gear cover. That's this, and we need a M4 hex wrench. And these are the two socket head cap screws that they're talking about. Not very tight. I've had this machine for well over 18 years, or it may be about 18 years. Okay, two screws. This is off. All right, next is the electrical. Detach, but do not disconnect the control box. There are four Phillips head machine screws, two on the top and two on the bottom. They're talking about these two here and then two down there. Let's do that. What I usually do after I take screws out is I replace them right back into the holes they came from. That's sort of a standard with a lot of guys that tear stuff apart. If I need to use those screws, I will take them out of this frame and put them in the new one. There's one. This is going to be a pretty long video. Okay, there's our four screws. I'm going to put those back into the holes I got them from. Okay. I'm going to take a picture right now. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to take a few more pictures, I think. I think I'm going to make a piece of tape that goes on there that tells me where this wire goes. Okay, I'm going to make up those little pieces of tape. 
what I noticed is there's actually two sets of black and white wires. One that goes to the forward reverse switch and the other set of black and white wire go to the on and off switch. I marked my one set of black and white wires with a tag. The other black and white wires I did not mark at all. And I documented that. I uh, the forward reverse switch also has a ground wire that is connected to the head. One other thing I should say about the wires, the white wire on the forward reverse went on the left side, the black wire on the right. On the on and off switch, the white wire is on the top terminal and the black wire is on the bottom terminal. Let's remove those. I disconnected the terminals. One thing I noticed is there's a strap here that holds the wires together. It really doesn't matter how you mark the wires. As long as you know how they were marked and you made a either a drawing or a, took a picture All right, that's done. Okay, next they're telling you to remove the other two ground wires. And I've noticed there's the first ground wire is green and yellow. The middle one is solid green. And then they tell you to remove the black plastic protector that's a protector to protect the wires from when that lead screw is spinning okay let's do that Like I said, I just put the screws right back in there. And the last wire here. Okay, then they tell you to remove this black protector. One, two. Okay, I'm going to put these screws back in there. We're probably going to have to drill and tap holes in the new frame. I'm not sure. Okay, what's next? Okay, what they tell you next is to remove this gear this pillow block that holds the lead screw and then take the apron off. I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to take that pillow block off, disconnect the half nut, and just take the whole carriage right off the end. 
And some machines, there's on this end, there's a small stud that stops this carriage from coming all the way off. You'll have to remove that too. Let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, we moved the pillow block. I need a hex wrench right here. That is a five millimeter hex wrench. I've got those two screws off and the pillow block is off. I get this stuff out of the way and see if I can just disconnect that and just walk this right off the end. Okay. What we're trying to do is get to those motor mount screws. We we'll remove this. What they want you to do is take this off of here, this one, probably best to take this off, like they tell you. There's a bushing in there too, and a small key. All three of those came out. Okay. Finish removing this pillow block. And the lead screw comes out. All right. Let's see what's next. Okay, what's next? They talk about the change gears. If you remove this nut here, the whole thing should come out. This whole adjustment part should come off. That's a 14 millimeter wrench. All right, came off pretty easy. What's next? Okay, before you can take that motor off, you have to take this guard off. It's on the back of the machine. And it looks like it's just these two screws. There could be more. And it looks like it's just the two screws. Okay, I'm going to slowly try to pull those wires through here. Okay, put this on the side. 
Before I take that motor off, I'm going to remove this gear housing. There's two screws, one here and one right here. A uh, five millimeter hex wrench should take that on. I've kind of deviated from the way they told me to do it. And a lot of the stuff they say in those instructions don't make a lot of sense. Okay, I think I'm ready for the motor, but before I do that, you need to take this belt off. I'm just going to slide it off this way. Pretty brittle. Might have to buy a new one of those. Like I said, I've had this for about 18 years. Okay, now we're going to remove these motor mount screws and get this motor off of here. You could have done this before removing this whole mechanism, but I decided to do it the other way. Okay, I need a wrench. The 10 millimeter. Not sure if these are the two, but they all have to come off anyway. Somewhere along the line, they decided to go away from these slotted slots in the frame. And they have a tilting type belt tightener. I put the screws back in the motor that went in these slots. I'm not sure if we need them again or not, but that's where they're going to be. Okay, not too much left here. Uh, I kind of got out of sync with what they were telling me when I started removing the carriage, the gears, uh, the pillow blocks here, uh, lead screw. But it all came out pretty easy. And with all the pictures I've taken and this video, I should be able to put it back together. Okay, what do they tell you next? It's the headstock and miscellaneous okay to remove the headstock you need a six millimeter uh hex wrench there's two screws here and one on the back of the lathe and as far as miscellaneous you need a 17 millimeter wrench to take this off you need that and that's one of the things you're going to have to drill a hole for, drill and tap, that's pretty precise. You need that in the right place. But anyway, we need that. We're going to take that off. Let's do that. Okay, let's start with the 17 millimeter. That didn't, it wasn't too tight at all. Okay. Need that. Don't lose that. That's for the change gears. Okay, after that, you need to remove these socket head cap screws. There's three of them, like I said. First tight screw I found on this thing. I'm going to have to move this one. Phillip head screw.
get this back one. It's hard to get that wrench in there. They painted right over everything. Two. I need to get this manual stop or dead stop off of there. Need to make a new one of these too. I made this a long time ago. It's not the most accurate, but it does create a dead stop. Okay, I'm going to take this out and we'll get back to the instructions. Gears don't look too bad for plastic. Okay, what's next? Okay, according to the instructions, we are finished taking this thing apart. Although it does talk about removing the, the rack, the feet, the tray. I'm not going to use any of that, so I don't need to go any further. We could put this on the side. Let's do that. This is the best part. The new 16 inch base. Although before we can start putting this thing together, a lot of things have to happen. We have to drill and tap all the holes for the gear rack, for the lead screw pillow blocks, for the gear, change gears. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to be done. I need to measure up all of this, stone it all down to make sure I have to measure all this just to check to see if it's going to, the carriage is going to fit on there. Most likely I have to readjust the Gibbs and that's a project in itself. The apron, the apron from being used for 18 years is full of chips and stuff and I want to make a chip guard. I've seen that on YouTube. A lot of guys do that upgrade. But uh, we will get to putting it back together. But for now, I think this video is coming to an end. I'm going to call it a wrap. So until next time, enjoy.